thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, it's great that you're all here. Uh, my name is Julia and I'm with Inspira Advantage. We're an admissions consulting company that's dedicated to helping applicants get into their desired professional or graduate school. Um, today we're going to be talking to you about all about dental schools and what you'll need to get into dental schools, all about the application process. Um, I'm joined with some really great panelists today. Um, but before I go ahead and introduce them, I want to go ahead and talk about what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so we'll be going over introductions, obviously introducing the panelists. Um, we'll be talking about the role of dentists in healthcare and, you know, obviously what they're doing within the role. Um, we'll talk about the application timeline, so how long you need to carve out um, for your application and generally when the due dates are. Um, and then we'll lead into dental school application requirements, which is obviously very important. Um, and then along that note, we'll talk about how to strengthen your dental school application, which I'm sure is a big reason why you're all here today. Um, and then we'll touch on tips for ensuring your application is ready for submission and ready to get accepted into your dream school. And then we'll go ahead and talk about our leave some time open for our questions and answers section. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, I'd ask that you please just put it in the chat box. And then once we get to the Q&A section, we'll go ahead and answer those questions for you. All right, well, Helena, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Helena. I'm a fourth year dental student at Tufts University School of Dental Medicine in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I did my undergrad in, at Emory University in Atlanta, um, and I'm originally from Los Angeles, so kind of a little bit all over the place, but um, I was in your shoes a few years ago, so I remember it very well, and I'm um, Happy to help answer any questions. Amazing. Thanks so much, Helena. Um, so it looks like Karen is having some tech issues. So we'll go ahead if she logs on, we'll do an introduction for her. But for now, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, Karen, do you want to take this? Or Karen, sorry. <laughs> Helena, do you want to take this next slide about the role of dentists in healthcare? Yes. So the role of a dentist in a healthcare setting is to um, focus on the well-being of the patient's teeth and gums, not just um, what we see in the oral cavity, but also in overall health. There's a lot of things that can be presented um, in the mouth, and we always like to say that the oral cavity is a gateway to the rest of the body. And so the role of a dentist is to be familiar specifically with the head and neck area, but also implications on the rest of the overall body and how that can, um, what goes on in the mouth can um, demonstrate what happens systemically as well. So our role is to detect and address early signs of conditions, um, health issues that can manifest in the oral cavity. Amazing. Thanks so much for the explanation. Um, did we skip a slide? No, perfect. Okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and talk about um, the dental school application timeline. So this is going to be one of the most important things of your application in general. You want to make sure you're handing it in on time. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss um, when you'll need to be handing in your application and all the deadlines that you need to follow. So to apply to dental school, it usually takes about two years, um, starting two years before dental school. So you're gonna wanna start in your junior year. Um, it begins in the month of November, December of your junior year. So this is really where you should have a checkpoint to see that you are finished or on track to finish all your prerequisite courses. You don't wanna be in a situation where you're about to apply to dental school and you don't have the prerequisite courses and they won't accept you. Um, so really make sure that you're on top of that and you're really making sure that you have all the courses that you need to apply to the dental school that you wish to get accepted to. January to March is when you really wanna focus on acquiring your letters of recommendation, building your CV, and taking the DAT if you hadn't already. Um, I would suggest like talk, um, speaking of letters of recommendation, try and do it as early as possible because you never wanna put the people that you're in, uh, you're asking for a letter of recommendation in a situation where they have to rush one off. Um, it should really be something where they're taking their time to really kind of recommend you as an applicant and really just tout you. So um, try and do that as early as you can, but generally January to March is a good headway. Um, yeah, and this is a great opportunity to give yourself some time to um, take the DAT, really kind of um, expand your experience. 
Um, and then taking the test at least a year in advance, it helps you have time to retake it later if you're not happy with the score or if not at the level of um, applicants or level of admissions where applicants are getting accepted to the school that you want. Um, in April and July, this is really where you'd want to start working on your application um, in spring and summer. It's because the AADSAS application, it opens in early May. So you really want to make sure that you submit your application when the cycle begins, which is usually in early June. And then following the submission, um, you may be requested to complete secondary essays during the summer. So really use that time to sell yourself pretty much um, and talk about why you would be a good fit at the dental school that you're applying to. Some schools actually do interviews during this period as well. So something to look out for too. Um, for senior year, um, September to December, the interviews will continue on into the winter months. So some schools may be sending their acceptance letters in early December, some are a little bit later. Um, and you may also learn if you've been waitlisted during this time. Um, and then from January to August, this is where you really want to stay in contact with waitlisted schools um, if you find yourself not accepted to the school that you want to be accepted to or vice versa um, because most students will be notified if they've been accepted to a school during this period and then in september you start your journey of becoming a dentist and dental school begins all righty so i will talk a little bit about the application requirements um so typically the common prerequisites that you would take at the undergraduate level include a year of biology, a year of general chemistry, a year of organic chemistry, and a year of physics. So those are typically the standard prerequisites that are um, requested, uh, or not rather requested, that are mandatory to be able to apply to dental school. However, you can major in whatever you need or whatever suits you. As long as you have these courses taken, um, you can major in whatever interests you at your college. Another thing about physics is that physics is required uh, as a prerequisite. However, it is not part of the DAT. So that is something to kind of keep in mind is that um, you do need to take that class, but it won't show up on the DAT, whereas biology, general chemistry, and organic chemistry will repeatedly see themselves um, in the DAT curriculum. Um, in addition to these four uh, core prerequisites, it's also common for dental schools to request additional classes like biochemistry, um, anatomy, physiology to help emphasize and reiterate um, more of that hard, harder science courses um, before you enter dental school. Um, the next requirement that is highly recommended is a curriculum by day, which is or a CV. Um, it's not necessary to apply, but it definitely is good to have a good version of a CV that you can use to kind of format your AdSAS application. And so all of that good volunteer experience, extracurricular experience, internships, and all that good stuff that you have in your application, um, it's good to have that nice and formatted, have when you did them, who, who you did it with, any contact information, because that's exactly what the AdSAP application is going to ask for, for you to manually input. So it's good to have a great, clear um, CV to have that. And then additionally, I had mentioned earlier the DAT. So the DAT stands for the General Admission Test. It's a computer-based exam that goes over um, typically the education that you would have taken in undergrad. So it's going to be all those prerequisite courses as well as math. Um, and then there's also a, um, a section on how to interpret different um, physical shapes. And so that's going to kind of help with 3D learning um, that is, you know, applied a lot during dentistry because a lot of dentistry is looking at um, 3D objects, which are your teeth, but on a 2D surface, which is like an x-ray. So having that good spatial awareness is something that's going to be really important. So um, the DAT is a separate exam that we would um, have you take before you enter dental school. Letters of recommendation are typically written by individuals in authority who can vouch for your work ethic and academic performance. Um, a lot of schools require at least two letters from science professors and then one from a dental professional, so someone that you may have shadowed or worked closely with, and then another one can be an advisor, either someone that you worked with in a school organization or a club or anything of that sort that can 
vouch to your leadership and um, uh, extracurricular activities. One other recommendation is that I would create a little folder for my letter of recommenders. I would first ask them if they would be interested in writing me a strong letter of recommendation. A lot of times it's always important to say, would, would you be willing to write me a strong letter? So you don't want just any regular letter. And then after they say that, I kind of help them out and I prepare a folder that included a copy of my CV, a copy of my personal statement, as well as a copy of my transcript, just so they can also have additional information so they can write me a really personalized letter of recommendation. So um, reach out to those people that you think could speak highly on your character, both academically and outside of of school for to be your letter recommender. Next one. And you want to go ahead? Sorry, I muted myself there. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, Helena. Um, next step is going to be to submit your application. This is the fun part. So after assembling all the necessary application materials, this is when you can submit your application. So the application cycle for um, lots of letters here, A-D-E-A, A-A-D-S-A-S, -A -A -S, it typically commences around June 1st. Some schools may be different, um, but this is typically the date that you'll be expected to submit your application in. Um, during this time, you can submit your completed application to be considered for dental school admission. Um, for supplemental essay, oh, oh no, <laughs> sorry. Um, supplemental essays, you may be asked to write a supplemental essay. Um, some dental schools have specific requirements for them. Um, so this usually involves writing one or two supplemental essays. So this is really an opportunity for you to, um, you know, talk about yourself and talk about why you want to go to dental school and why you want to go to this specific dental school and really kind of sell yourself to the admissions committee. Um, so use this as an opportunity to really kind of hone in and express yourself. Um, and it's really important to, if you, you know, struggle with writing or you really want to make sure this is the best you can be, seek out help um, to really make sure that this supplemental essay, if you have to write it, uh, really speaks to the admissions council and it helps get your um, application accepted. So the final step will be interviews. So the interview stage, um, it's crucial to dedicate time to thoroughly research the specific school that you are applying to and their interview process. Um, some schools will ask different questions. So you really wanna make sure you're prepared. You don't wanna be scrambling, thinking of answers when this is probably gonna be the most important interview of your career, um, other than actually interviewing for a dental position. So make sure you practice, practice, practice. Respond to potential inter interview questions beforehand grab a friend or loved one to help you out and make sure you really are on top of your game and do not struggle and you're not struggling with responding to any questions and nothing catches you off guard. All right, Elena, if you want to take this one away. Sure. Um, how to strengthen your dental school application. Um, so after you have your core uh, application materials, there are additional ways that you can strengthen it. So one of those ways is attending a pre-dental program. Um, a lot of school dental schools do offer some summer programs or uh, visit days where you can come uh, visit a dental school. You'll participate in different workshops. I know my school at Tufts, we have a yearly impressions day where we have interested pre-dental students come and we review their uh, resumes. We do writing workshops and we also um, take them, give a tour of the school. And we also have them um, go into the sim lab and practice on models. And so it's a great exposure to the school and also to the uh, field of dentistry. And it really gives something very tangible to talk about either through your application essays or in the interviews. So I would highly recommend attending a pre-dental program so that you can kind of get your feet wet um, ahead of um, the interviews. Additionally, incorporating volunteer experiences into your resume, um, particularly in a clinic setting. So whether that's working at a community health center or working at um, a clinic or anything like that can really show that you are uh, dedicated to this field and that you're willing to put the time and effort in um, to be able to provide Oh, no, I think we might have lost you, Helena. 
Um, in that case, I'll go ahead and pick up where she left off. Um, so another way to strengthen your dental school application is to shadow a dentist. This is a really great way to get experience, um, first-hand experience for that matter, because you're shadowing the expert. Um, and it's a great way to see, you know, what patients end up in a dentist chair, what they do on a daily basis. Um, and it'll really give you valuable insights about being a dentist and what they do on an everyday basis, like I mentioned before. And it'll also help you understand the responsibilities of a dentist, um, strengthens your commitment to becoming a dentist. And also um, it'll really, I guess, open your eyes and make you see like, do I really wanna be a dentist? It'll really strengthen your passion as well. So if you're able to do so, I think it's a really great way to A, show your interest um, of becoming a dentist and B, it's really great experience to put on your CV. And when application, um, admissions committees, they see this on your application, they'll say, wow, this is amazing. If they've already taken the initiative to all go ahead and go out in the field and shadow a dentist and learn everything that they can before they go to dental school. So it's a really great way to show experience. And then following that, um, you really wanna take a look at extracurricular, extracurricular activities as well. These are super, super important to a dental school application or any application to a graduate school for that matter. Um, participation in extracurriculars, it shows your ability to manage time, work in teams, it can show leadership qualities and working in under high stress situations, which you know may happen when you're a dentist. Um, so you'll want to consider joining clubs, organizations, or communities that align with your interests and showcase your commitment to service. All righty, so now we're at tips to ensure your application is ready for submission. So this is, I'm sure, what you're all here for. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do to ensure that your application is ready for submission is to plan and organize. You literally want to create a, a timeline that outlines everything that you need to do within the application, which we've already kind of highlighted and touched on. Um, but you'll want to ensure that you give yourself enough time to gather required documents, complete prerequisite courses and prepare for your entrance exams because those are super important and you really want to make sure that you're staying organized, you're not rushing anything so you can present the best version of your application and the best version of yourself. Next, you want to review the application requirements. So you really want to make sure that you have everything that the application is asking for. You never want to send an application and have something missing. Um, so make sure you take note of the prerequisites that you'll need in order to apply to the specific dentistry school that you're interested in, letters of recommendation, personal statement prompts, and any other supplemental materials that you may need. During your application, you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to detail. Detail, being detail oriented is very important when you're a dentist. So if the application committee sees that you are not detail oriented when you're applying to de dental school, that's going to kind of raise something. So you really want to make sure that everything is perfect with your application. You got to double check all the sections, provide comprehensive and honest responses and ensure everything is consistent across your application. And then, of course, you want to proofread your application. So this kind of goes hand in hand with attention to detail. Look at your application over and over and over and over and over again. Get somebody else to look at your application because sometimes, you know, you could be missing something and someone would be able to point it out. So you really want to make sure you're paying attention to grammar, spelling, and overall clarity um, when you're looking at your written components. You really want to make sure you're editing and proofreading your application multiple times. Your CV, if there's a typo on there, it's not a good look. So you really want to make sure that you have everything error free and you're conveying your message and who you are effectively. And then lastly, the most important one, you want to submit before your deadlines. Many schools will not accept an application after the deadline. So you really want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of time and submit before the deadline to avoid any last minute technical issues or delays. Um, you really want to make sure that you complete your application well in advance to give yourself some time. If something comes up, then you have the time to fix it and still apply rather than applying at the last minute. And it gives you ample consideration um, and the admissions committee of ample consideration to consider you and get you in school. Okay, so now we've reached our Q&A. Um, oh, Alina, you're back. Okay, great. <laughs> We've reached the Q&A, but um, we did touch on dental school, um, like tips to get ready for dental school. But I was just curious, now that you're here, are there any um, anything that you want to add to this? Um, my big thing is 
I mean, you kind of touched on it with as far as being detail oriented and um, being really good about planning and organizing everything. Um, it it's it's a testament to your character as well to make sure that you know everybody's on the same page as far as your letter of recommenders um any of your faculty that are going to be writing on your behalf as well as for you and any interviews that you go on any meetings that you coordinate with um, any admission counselors making sure that um, you stay professional with them and um, everything is very detailed and organized is really going to put you up to success because there's so many deadlines and there's so many moving parts at once. Um, once you get your primary application and then secondary and then interviews, like there's just a lot of moving parts and making sure that you're staying on top of that, making sure you're replying to emails in a timely manner um, is really going to go far and put a good um, first impression at these admission counselors when they go ahead to review your application. So um, I think we've touched on that, but I, I did want to reiterate that because um, it's very easy to slip through the cracks, like something to slip through the cracks. For sure. Um, out of everything, like all the admission requirements or everything that you'll have to add in an application, what do you think carries the most weight? Like, what do you think an applicant should really be spending the most time on? Um, in my personal opinion, I feel like the personal statement is the best uh, like perspective of who you are as a person. Um, I think grades can talk a little bit about you and also your activities and your volunteer work, but your personal statement is really the only opportunity that you have to say your voice and not really sound so robotic as far as like, I got this grade in this class and then I got, um, I spent this amount of time at this location at this volunteer organization. So the personal statement is really an opportunity for you to speak your voice and that's what they're gonna use to hope um, your interview will end up being like. So um, they wanna get a chance to know who you are as a person. So I would really recommend that the personal statement you spend as much time on. I'm not a, the best kind of writer. And for me, it was really um, valuable to reach out to my writing center at my undergrad. And they helped me review my different drafts. I sent it to different friend groups and I tried to have them all read it. Um, and I had people that weren't even in dental school. I had people that were... Um, you know, in other types of schools so that they can read it and everything still made sense to them and they could still read who I was through this essay. So making sure that you spend the most time on that would be my best recommendation. Um, so yeah, great advice. Just out of curiosity, uh, for your personal essay, like how many versions did you go through for that? I feel like there's probably so many drafts. It's just like you're like going over and perfecting everything. Yeah, um, I think I probably had seven drafts of my personal statement. And then I had smaller drafts that I had when I got to my supplemental. I think the supplemental essays had about two versions each. Um, so yeah, definitely spend your time on that and like, and definitely have different people read it because you're gonna get sick of it after a certain point. So it's good to get a fresh set of eyes um, to review it as well. For sure, totally agree. Okay, so I think we've reached our Q&A session. Um, I was just wondering if you could touch on the DAT as well, because um, I think we might have touched on that briefly, but if you could share any tips, advice, or whatever, I think could be really helpful. So for me, when I was studying for the DAT, I used a, um, a, a pre test prep course, I used a Kaplan, um, and I felt like that program was really helpful for me creating a schedule. It can be very daunting to sit down and try to plan how to study for the DAT. It's a long exam. It's about endurance. This is not a sprint. So the, the thing about the DAT is it's a lot of breadth, not necessarily depth. And so the topics can range from a whole bunch of things, and it can be very overwhelming to start that process um, of where to start studying. So I would definitely recommend at least um, either GAT Bootcamp, Kaplan, um, uh, I think there's like, there's a couple other ones out there, but whatever one you find, choose one and stick to it. The other piece of advice I would have is once you find a program or once you find a um 
study materials that you like, don't go out looking for other ones because again, it's going to be a plethora of information. And then you'll, you're trying to grab all these practice exams and all these practice questions from Kaplan and DT. Like you're, if you do that, you're going to drive yourself insane as well. So have one program that you've done your research on that you take, you like the information, you like the way that everything is communicated. Like if you're a visual person, choose a program that has a lot of diagrams and videos. Um, if you are more of a book person and you rather read, choose that. But don't go out of your way trying to collect as many resources as possible because then you'll never, you'll never finish them. And that's ultimately what we want to do is we want to finish the prep course so that we can prepare for the DAT. Another piece of advice I would have is that um, not everything has to be something that you have to pay for as far as like these prep courses. There are a lot of free resources as well. One thing that I did was I subscribed to DAT question of the day, um, kind of similar to how Merriam-Webster sends like a word of the day. You'll get an email that is sent to you every day um, and it'll be different questions. So it could be like a science question, it could be a math question, reading question, or the uh, PAT section, and they will send you a practice question. And that was something that I would do when I was waiting for the train or if I was, you know, waiting for my food to microwave, like those months that you dedicate for the DAT, it should be you are like uh, living, eating, breathing the DAT for about two months. And then once that is exam is done, then you can go ahead. And, and honestly, it's kind of, it's nice that you get your results as soon as you're done, because then at least you can plan accordingly. So um, like I said, the, the DAT question of the day was a way for me to kind of keep my head thinking about practice questions, thinking about DAT, even if I wasn't dedicated, like spending those hours. Um, so those are my big pieces of advice for preparing for the DAT. It's, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So you wanna prepare for it um, like with care and consideration because it's expensive. You don't wanna have to take it again either. Oh, like if, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive, it's time consuming, it's, it's yeah so you, the time that you do spend on it and I can think that's another thing I would say is um when you decide when you want to take it make sure it's a time that you can focus and you can remove all distractions I know some people they would take it during winter time um like when they would get off of school and we have that month off um typically during undergraduate but for me my family for example Christmas is a big thing so we have a whole bunch of family coming in all the time there's always events I knew I would not focus if I tried to study during like the holiday season. So, and I know that about myself. I know that about my family. So I said, I'm not going to do that during then. And I waited until January, February time. That was my dedicated time. Took the exam in March, was happy with my score. And then by the time May and, um, and June, and when the application came open, I was ready to submit everything. So um, be, be, uh, be aware of, you know, your personal commitments um, when you're allocating time for it. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think it all boils down to being organized and being on top of things. It sounds like you are like okay. very on top of things. Um, yes. We've got a question coming in here as well. Um, how does the MCAT compare to the, the DAT? I know, like, could you speak to that? If, are they comparable? Should we be studying more for one or the other, vice versa? Um, I personally cannot speak to the MCAT. I know that's separate exam. Um, I only studied and prepared for the DAT. Um, and the DAT is very different from the MCAT. The way it's graded is very different. The contents that it goes over. I think the MCAT does go over physics. The DAT doesn't. Um, the DAT also has the uh, perceptual ability exam, which is very, very unique. That's not something that you would find on any standardized exam except for the DAT. So um, I think it would, studying for the MCAT wouldn't help for the DAT and vice versa. Studying for the DAT wouldn't help for the MCAT. So they're, they're two separate exams. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Um, let's see if we have any other questions here. Could you speak to um, when it comes to course requirements, um, what courses would you say are the most important to have? I know we have the prerequisite courses and everything, but what courses are the most important um, when you're applying to dental school? Um, 
I think in addition to the prerequisite courses, if, you know, I interview uh, students that are interested in, that get to the interview stage at Tufts. So I review applications and I see kind of their coursework. For me, what stands out to me on top of, and this is just my personal opinion, on top of um, the prerequisite courses, I wanna see some interest in social sciences. I personally was an anthropology major uh, and I loved anthropology. I love the study of humans and I think it's so fascinating. And I think having that ability to speak on those um, social sciences really speaks to your soft skills, your bedside manners. And so being able to take courses in sociology, anthropology, psychology, things like that, um, show me that you're interested in um, kind of what you would be like as a provider um, a few years down the road, because it's not just about the science. Um, being a dentist is being in someone's chair and being taken care of. A lot of people do have dental anxiety. A lot of people do have fear of going to the dentist. So how do you get them to be comfortable in your chair and have them build trust with you? That's the kind of stuff that you're not going to get from biochemistry, from learning how to balance equations. That's not going to show up on there. So I would rather, personally for me, I would also have those other courses that you would take and be able to speak on that as well. It's so true. Those soft skills are so important, especially as someone that's terrified of the dentist. I can speak to that. Having a dentist that's really kind of caring and makes you feel comfortable is so important. So it's probably yeah. so important to be able to showcase that in your application as well. Absolutely, absolutely. All righty. I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Um, unless you have any final thoughts, Helena, that you want to drive home or? Um, I would just, my big piece of advice with the dental school application process for me is don't look left and don't look right. Just look straight. If you get caught up looking at what your classmates are doing, what other peers are doing, what these blogs talk about, you're going to, you're going to set yourself up for failure. You can only be the better version of yourself than you were yesterday. And that's honestly all that really matters. Um, and so, you know, there's, when I look at my dental school class, I look at people that have so many experiences, a range of GPAs, a range of DATs, but we're all at the same place. And guess what? When next year, when I graduate, we're all going to be getting the same degree. So I think it's really important to stay focused on what you need to do and what your skill sets and, and, and highlight those and don't look for others, like look to others to kind of compare yourself because this is your journey. This is your path to being a dentist. This is what you want to do. So let that be your driving force. Um, that would be my biggest takeaways. Um, don't get yourself caught up looking at what everybody else is doing. Be the best version of yourself and that will transpire in the application. I love that. What a great way to end off the seminar with. Um, and I probably applicable in many other situations, especially, you know, when you're applying to dental school. Um, thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. Um, mm -hmm. I want to clarify further, because um, I think it did come up that this, this session will be recorded. Um, so if you want to go back and see anything that we talked about, anything that we touched on, um, any notes that Helena has touched on and the advice that she's given, we will be sending this out afterwards. So um, look out for that. Other than that, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. It was a really great, insightful conversation, and I hope you guys took a lot from it. Um, and thank you so much, Helena, for your expertise. It's much appreciated. No problem. My pleasure. Bye, guys.